When Michel Platini succeeded Lennart Johansson as UEFA president two years ago, we suspected that political change might be in the air. Platini promised solidarity and universality. Smaller countries were to be better represented within the European football structure. So has he delivered and is his leadership the right kind for the game of football in Europe at the moment? Tommy, let's start with the UEFA Champions League. Now, he's done his tinkering there and the emphasis has been on trying to help the middle ranking countries and the so-called smaller countries. Yeah, he's paid off as a political debt here and he's paid it off to the detriment, in my opinion, of the Champions League. I mean, it's fine and noble to say, OK, we should have smaller teams and more smaller teams in the Champions League. But it's the big teams who catch the imagination of the people. It's the big games that catch the imagination of the people. Everybody is salivating now over Inter Milan against Manchester United. Two of the bigger teams, you know, that you don't hear too many people talking about, oh, that's the game I want to watch. It's very noble, but it's it, the game, the Champions League is as boring now at times as watching paint dry. No, I, I, I disagree strongly, Tommy. I, yes, it is noble, and I think it's a responsibility for, for Platini as you for president. The smaller countries have to be represented. It's the best way for their football to improve. OK, so these teams are introduced. All right, they may get knocked out early, and of course, everybody continues to salivate over Manchester United and Inter. But this is how football in individual countries are. are but you is, play, Shaka, your team is as good as the team that you play. Look at the yeah, English teams in the Champions I'm, League no, what, and tell me what's wrong with what having four of them what in What I'm there. saying is, if these smaller clubs are, or smaller countries aren't represented... They're in the preliminaries. All right, if, but they, if, if they, they work their way out, fine. If they don't, get in their football stagnates yeah, but they and, do what get we have, in. and what we do what we will have in, in, in Europe is, is similar to what is happening in England where you have a top four and nobody else seems that's to that's what matter. you're going to have anyhow that's what I, you're going to no, have anyhow no I, I think Platini is trying to avert that and I think that is part well, of did his, he avert it, it is no. part of his responsibility you tell me any of the small teams that make it's, it it's only been two years he's trying to and that's a big mandate you don't that's tell me when you have to do a game between some team from the Ukraine and somebody else I can speak from a personal point of view in terms of well it's Trinidad of course we're not Europe, but Trinidad qualifying for the World Cup was a magnificent mark in our footballing history. It will affect our footballing history for long after you and I are gone. And I think these smaller clubs being represented yep. in the Champions League will have a similar effect. Okay, it won't grab the imagination of everybody, it won't grab the ima imagination of those neutrals, but it'll have a long lasting impact, a greater impact than television, television audiences will ever reflect. I think, Frank, it's fair to say that Michel Platini wanted to be even more radical than this, but he struck a compromise. Does that not prove that he's an able footballing politician? He's managing to reach middle ground where he has to and still getting part of his manifesto through? Yeah, well, it's a, I mean, it's a cash-22 when, you know, when you, of course, want to level every, everything and uh, try to make uh, our game more universal and, uh, and give chance to smaller clubs to be involved in, uh, in big competitions. But at the end of the day, you know, you have the pressure of uh, the media who wants to show big games, as Tony, Tommy said. And, uh, and, uh, but I, I, will, uh, I, I mean, I think he's, he's on a good way to, to change everything. You know, at the end of the day, you know, why do you want to protect big clubs? If they are big clubs, they don't need to be protected, you know. So uh, the, the, the beauty, the beautiness of uh, the FA Cup is to see big clubs, you know, uh, struggling against uh, small, smaller clubs. So why don't we do the same in the Champions League? I think it's in a good way.